Well, the Phillies' magic number is just one. Everybody. Welcome to Philly's Hot Stove Media. Terry Cabin this afternoon's game is in the fifth of Phillies and the Washington Nationals as the Phillies defeat the Nationals by a final score of 8-1 to one in six innings. I'm not sure what in the heck took so long. Uh, we're playing a team uh, that has lost 100 plus games. They have nothing to play for uh, and they're down by seven runs. Now, the game is in rain delay for a while but luckily it was finally called after six innings of play. Now guys, before we get into this video, please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please turn on that notification bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. Uh, so thank you, Marlins. Uh, breaking news, I mean, the game just went final at the time of this video. Uh, the Marlins defeat the Brewers 4-3 as the Phillies' magic number was 2 uh, after their win over the Nationals here this afternoon, and now it goes to 1. So it's over. It's pretty much over. Uh, now, if the Phillies win tomorrow, the uh, Milwaukee Brewers lose, then it's officially over. Uh, but it's pretty much over. The Phillies would really have to uh, have an epic failure, uh, you know, to miss the playoffs. But, I mean, honestly, I mean, anything could happen. I mean, this team has uh, been known to absolutely just choke uh, in these kind of situations. Not to sound negative, but, I mean, I'm just stating a fact. Uh, in 2020, they easily should have made it. Uh, you know, last year they had all those blown saves that kept them from being in the playoffs. Hopefully they don't botch this opportunity because they have a golden opportunity. So it's pretty much done. Uh, the Phillies are most likely going to be making the playoffs for the first time since 2011. So it just sounds, it just doesn't even sound right. Uh, you know what I mean? I just because I just heard it so many times in the last four years. Uh, so I won't believe it until I see it. But we're this close. We are this close. Uh, so big thanks to the Marlins for taking care of business uh, and beating the Milwaukee Brewers. Interesting thing to note. Now, the Phillies are going to be going against uh, Lance McCuthers Jr. And all the reports came out from Dusty Baker and the Astros saying, oh, you know, he's still going to play the starters. You know, I'm still going to do this. I don't care what anybody says. The Astros have already clinched, uh, you know, the playoffs a while ago. They are the AL West Division champions. They have clinched home field advantage. They have clinched home field advantage, which is a very, very interesting point to bring up. Uh, so if they somehow, and I just, I'll give you a scenario here, the Phillies sweep out the Houston Astros, it means nothing. It means absolutely nothing for the Astros. They still have their home field advantage. Uh, of course, they you know, still win a division. It means nothing. It's irrelevant. Uh, so I can't really see as to why Dusty Baker is going to play his starters for the full nine innings. Uh, and uh, Lance McCutters Jr., I, I don't really see him uh, going a lot of innings. I heard somebody bring up a point about 2020 when the Phillies played the Tampa Bay Rays, and they already clinched the AL East. They already clinched home field advantage for the playoffs. That was different. And I'll explain why. That was a like 60-game shortened season. Uh, players weren't as tired at the end of the year, of course, as they would be in a 162-game season. I mean, that's pretty obvious. I mean, it pretty much goes without saying. Of course they're not, because they played 102 less games. Uh, you know what I mean? So that, that's a totally different story. Uh, you know what I mean? They, they, the managers want to rest up their players. Uh, they want to rest up their players. Of course, they want to have them still get some playing time. I mean, you know, somewhat. It's almost going to be like, you know, spring training in a way. Uh, they're not going to put in their top-level guys. Uh, a lot of it is just going to be bench players, which is just going to be great. Uh, so I don't really care what anybody says. I mean, I just can't see Dusty Baker, uh, you know, putting Lance McCutters Jr. out there for A plus innings. I, I just can't. I mean, unless he's just, you know, absolutely just mowing us down and, you know, has, uh, you know, 12 strikeouts. Uh, I, I just I just don't see that happening. I was saying this today. I said I honestly would rather play a team like the Astros than play a team like the Arizona Diamondbacks. Of course, you know, for both of those teams, uh, it means nothing. For the case of the Diamondbacks, of course, uh, they got eliminated a while ago, uh, so uh, you know they're not going to be in the postseason. And in the case of the Houston Astros, it does not affect uh, what happens to their home field advantage status in the postseason, and, and it does not affect them making the postseason. So uh, in both cases, it does not affect either team either way. But I would rather have you know a team like the Houston Astros going to be playing a team uh, almost like the Miami Marlins. You know, their season is over. They're going to leave Sandy O'Connor out there if he's dominating. Uh, you know what I mean? They're going to leave him out there, even though they're not going to be making the playoffs, but that's not going to be the you know, be the case for a team that's going to be making the playoffs because they want to preserve him for the playoffs. Uh, if a team's not making the playoffs, and they have nothing to preserve the players for. Uh, the season's over. They're trying to get them some playing time. For a team that's making the playoffs, they're trying to rest them up, especially after a 162-game season. So I think the Phillies can easily take care of business in Houston, uh, you know, very easily. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I don't doubt it at all. Speaking of the scoring summary here in the top of the second inning, Bryson Stott uh, grounds out the second. 
uh, as Nick Castellanos comes around to score. I mean, that was a great hustle from Bryson Stott to beat out that ground ball, and the Phillies now lead it one to nothing. Uh, so uh, Bryson Stott getting the job done right there, driving in a run. Then we pick it up here in the top of the fourth inning. Bryson Stott uh, doubles on his sharp fly ball to right field. Gene Segura and Matt Fearing come around and score, and the Phillies now lead it three to nothing. So Bryson Stott had a big day today in our nation's capital, uh, collecting his 18th double of the season off of Patrick Corbin, uh, who started off pretty strong, but I mean, of course he folded as he always does. Uh, so that was not his best start, that is for sure. So the Phillies now have a 3 to nothing lead. Now we pick it up here in the same inning. Bryce Harper, who has really not been very good, right? He didn't have the best series, uh, but he got the job done right here as he singles on a ground ball to center field. Uh, C.J. Abrams uh, dove for that one, but he came up short as Bryson Stott comes around to score on that one, and the Phillies now lead it 4 to nothing. So Reese Hoskins in the at-bat prior to Bryce Harper being up the plate uh, went down on strikes looking. Uh, of course, it was the first and third one-out situation. Then Bryce Harper luckily was able to come up and collect that clutch hit that we needed uh, to give us the 4 to nothing lead. And we pick it up here in the top of the fifth inning. Kyle Schwarber singles on a ground ball to left field the other way. Alec Bohm and Gene Segura come around and score. And the Phillies now have a commanding 7 to nothing lead. So Schwarber was in the ball hard all series. I mean, first of all, he rakes the Nationals Park. He rakes off of Patrick Corbin. Hit two home runs off of him this year from way back in June. Uh, at Nats Park, uh, so I mean, he was hitting the ball hard today, uh, no question about that, so a nice two-run single that now gives us a 7 to nothing lead, uh, so you were feeling pretty good, I mean, uh, I, I was a, maybe a tad bit nervous for some reason, I mean, I just, I, I did think we would win this game, but uh, you just never know with this Phillies team, you just never know, I mean, I never would have thought we would have gotten swept out by the Cubs uh, in Chicago, uh, I never would have thought that ever would have happened, so uh, you just never know with this team, it's just a weird team, uh, so seven to nothing, Phillies. And we pick it up here in the top of the sixth inning. After it was already official game, all anybody cared about was just getting past that bottom of the fifth inning. It's all anybody ever ever cared about. Uh, and uh, JT Muto homers on a fly ball to right field the other way. Uh, and the Phillies now lead it eight to nothing. So an eight zip lead for this Phillies team. JT Muto, twenty two home runs, twenty two home runs. I mean, what a year JT has had. Uh, he's been absolutely incredible. I mean, the BCIB. Let me pick it up here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Joey Menezes grounds out the short. Uh, so throw to first was in time from Bryson Stott. But in the meantime, Lane Thomas came around to score on that one uh, as the Nationals get on the board now an 8-1 to one ball game. So it isn't really anything too significant. Uh, but uh, the Nationals were threatening a little bit there off of Andrew Vladimir. So the Phil was up being up 8-0. I wasn't really too concerned. So that would be your final 8-1 to one Phillies. I mean, they absolutely kicked the Nationals butt again this season. They did it in 2021. Uh, they did pretty well against them in 2020. Uh, so uh, over the last you know, three seasons, we have done very well against this Nationals team. Uh, they had our number for the past, you know, for the previous like seven years. So uh, I like to see us being up on these guys. I mean, getting our revenge. I just love it. Zach Lear, of course, was very good today as well. We'll get to him in a little bit. Kyle Schubert out of the leadoff spot, collects two knocks. I mean, that huge clutch, two RBI single to get the Phillies a 7 to nothing lead at that point. Three RBIs for Schubert today. He also was able to draw a walk. Uh, it's nice to see him finishing off the season strong. 217 average now for Schwarbs on the year. 92 RBIs. I like to see that RBI total above 90. That's awesome. 815 OPS. Uh, and, of course, over his last seven games, a 292 average, a 452 OBP, uh, and a 667 slugging percentage. Uh, and uh, over his last 30 games, 230 average, 351 OBP, and a 504 uh, slugging percentage. So I really could just care less. Uh, what the average is uh, for a guy like Kyle Schwarber. I care about that OPS, uh, and the OPS over the last month has been very, very good. So 44 home runs, you know, still sitting there strong. Hopefully he can go deep in Houston to get to 45. Uh, and uh, Reese Hoskins with a rough hit was the performance here this afternoon as he goes down and strikes twice. Of course, he struck out in the first and third situation with one out. Of course, that's when Bryce Harper would come up and deliver that RBI single. Speaking of Bryce Harper, only one hit today, but it was that RBI single. Uh, so he was able to pick up his teammate right there. Uh, but other than that, not much out of Harp. Uh, a lot of soft contact. I and, mean, of course, he flew out to, you know, uh, Cesar Hernandez in foul territory out in left field. Uh, so not the best day for Harp. Uh, and uh, JT Muto, and when it was a big one, the home run the other way to right field. 22 tanks now on the year for the BCIB. Uh, so how about that? JT Muto, you are the man. And uh, Alec Baum, uh, one knock here this afternoon as well. Uh, as he also scores one of the Phillies' eight runs, also goes down strikes once as well. And Nick Castellanos, uh, whether he hit his performance this afternoon, 
uh, but he was able to draw a walk. You know, not really much out of uh, Nick Castellanos, and of course, why would I expect that much out of this guy? Uh, he's only provided a 701 OPS uh, with a 266 average. Uh, they're going with uh, 62 RBIs. Uh, and uh, Gene Segura, uh, two knocks here this afternoon as well, uh, also drawing a walk. Uh, Gene Segura had a very productive afternoon. Matt Vierling uh, collects two knocks out and right. Uh, of course, uh, his 12th double of the season uh, off of Pancha Corbin. Uh, and Bryson Stott uh, had a very good day at the plate, uh, driving in three. Uh, but unfortunately, he did make another error at short, another misplay. I understand, I mean, the ground was wet. I mean, that field is pretty much unplayable. So I'm more willing to give Bryson Stott a pass on that one simply because of the fact that the, the playing conditions were very poor. Uh, but uh, you got to make those plays, man. I mean, he's been a very disappointing defender uh, as of late. It's, it's just been no secret. I've been very disappointed in his defense. I mean, no question about that. So the Phillies collect 11 hits on eight runs, uh, and uh, they walk three times. They only struck out four times today as a team. I mean, that's it, four times. Of course, half of those strikeouts were from Reese Hoskins. Uh, and uh, Zach Lear, five innings, two hits, uh, didn't allow any runs, didn't walk anybody, and struck out seven. I mean, this man is an absolute beast. Uh, he really is. Uh, he uh, finishes uh, the regular season with a 2 a 2 ERA. Uh, so congratulations to Zach Lear. Another great year uh, from him uh, as he uh, collects to win 12-7 uh, and seven now on the year. So he's looking very strong going into the playoffs, isn't he? Uh, isn't he? Uh, you can kind of tell that Rob Thompson, I mean, uh, he could have left him in a little bit longer, but I'm glad he didn't, right? Rest him up for the playoffs, especially, uh, he's not too far off from coming off of that injury, so, uh, perfect timing. Mean, I would have taken him out, too, uh, especially in that, in that really just nasty weather in, in the nation's capital here this afternoon, and pretty much anywhere, everywhere. I mean, it was, it, this was, this was not a good day. Of course, if anybody watched the Eagles game, and you also saw it was raining in the Philly area, too. Uh, so uh, it, it was not a good day up here in the Northeast, uh, weather-wise. Uh, and uh, Angel Bellotti in inning, one hit, one run, run was earned, one walk, and two strikeouts. Does allow the RBI ground out uh, by Joey Menaces. Uh, but uh, that was pretty much the lonely Nationals run. Of course, uh, uh, Nationals Park was Fan Appreciation Day. That was their final home game of the season as they will be traveling up to New York to face the New York Mets uh, for a three-game series. As hopefully the Nationals can uh, take care of business against uh, the New York Mets. And, of course, the, uh, the Braves and Mets are on Sunday Night Baseball tonight on ESPN. That's going to be very interesting. I imagine a lot of people are going to be watching that. Uh, that's going to be a very interesting game. So the Braves are one game up over the Mets, and it's going to be pretty much over. The Braves win tonight. Uh, I think it's pretty much over. I think the Braves are most likely going to be the NL East champs. Uh, you know, are going to be two games up. I mean, of course, both teams are playing lousy teams. You got the New York Mets facing the uh, Washington Nationals. You got the Atlanta Braves facing the Miami Marlins. I mean, the Miami Marlins are, of course, going to be the tougher opponent uh, of the Nationals and Marlins. But uh, still, I mean, both of them are, you know, fairly easy teams that I mean, you should win against. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to see how this unfolds. Of course, the San Diego Padres did uh, officially clinch uh, the postseason here uh, this afternoon. I could really care less. I just want to make the playoffs. I just want to make the playoffs. I don't care about what the other guys do. Of course, I care about what the Milwaukee Brewers do, uh, but I could really care less. I mean, I, I would like to see the Braves win the division over the Mets, uh, but uh, of course, if the Mets finish on top and we make the playoffs, I, I just I really don't care. Aaron Nola gets to start for the first one, 10 and 13 with a 3-3-6 year rate going against Lance. Lance McCuthers Jr., 4-1 with a 2-3-8 ERA. So as I just said at the beginning, I can't see Dusty Baker leaving him in for very long. 8-10 the first pitch Tuesday night. Ranger Suarez, 10-6 with a 3-3-7 ERA going against Justin Verlander, 17-4 with a 1-8-0 ERA. 4-10 the first pitch Wednesday afternoon. Bailey Falter, 6-4 with a 3-9-0 ERA. Valdez, 16-6 with a 2-8-9 ERA. So as I said, I mean, Justin Verlander has been one of the best pitchers in baseball uh, over the last three years. I, I can't imagine uh, them you know, having him go very deep in that one. I, I just can't. Uh, especially with the injury, you know, he recently came off of. So uh, <laughs> I just, I just can't see that happening. But hopefully, uh, his wife is in the building. Now that way, we get to see some eye candy. So guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please turn on the notification bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Check out the social media link in the description section at Philly Sansu Media Instagram, Instagram. Follow me on Twitter at Biatsu Media. Car text two six seven two two five three nine two. Email me, phillysandsofmedia at gmail.com. So guys, thanks so much for watching. Great series win, 3 out of 4 in the nation's capital. Uh, and uh, Nolan McCuthers Jr. tomorrow night in Houston. Please take care of business. I'm Luke, and I'll talk to you. Let's go, Phils. I'll see you guys.